before I started YouTube, I always wondered how much real money can I make from it? So in this video, I wanna go over what's happened over the last two years and what have I actually gotten from it. First, let's buy a $6 coffee. The key thing here is there's a bunch of different avenues to get money through YouTube. The first one that I thought would be the most important was AdSense. That's what they call whenever someone watches your video and you get a certain amount of money for every thousand views. So that is your RPM, revenue per milli. And I had no reference. I didn't know if it was a couple dollars, a uh, hundred dollars. The thing is, is it changes per channel based on how much traffic you bring into YouTube, how long you keep them on the website. So right now my RPM ranges anywhere from five dollars to fifteen dollars so if i make most of my videos get two thousand to four thousand views so that's on the low end ten dollars to twenty dollars per video i put out about six or so a month that is not enough to sustain anything these are the exact numbers on my current video i just uploaded it's at a thousand views so for every one thousand views i'm getting nine dollars and fifty three cents so i'm just at ten dollars and nineteen cents now what youtube charges the advertisers is almost three times as much they are charging $26.55 for every thousand views. And this is something I'm gonna bring up later, which is when you're working for someone else versus working directly to consumer, you make such a bigger piece of the pie. So when I started making videos two years ago, I didn't get any money for the first 10 months because you have to hit these qualifications. You have to have a thousand subscribers. You have to have 4,000 hours of watch time and something else. So all of those videos during those first 10 months were unpaid. And then after that, you can start making money. I think my first month I made 30 bucks. So again, it's not a lot of money. Now at the two year mark, it has started to increase. Not into anything meaningful, but now I'm averaging around 200 to 300 a month. I'll take that all day. If you're a big channel and your RPM is $30 per thousand views and you are getting hundreds of thousands of people watching each video and you're putting out multiple videos per week, at that point, you could be self-sustainable. You can bring in enough money, especially if your overhead is low and you are editing or you have very few people that are using that you are using to help edit, thumbnail, all the back end work. If you can con condense it down to yourself, your profit margins are extremely high. So far, after two years, I have not been able to crack that case. I cannot make enough on just the AdSense. So then you go into the second venue stream, revenue stream, which uh, is affiliates. Now, this can be extremely lucrative. I have very, very few affiliations uh, with companies. The easy one is I have a channel about camera gear. So I have everybody asking, what piece of gear is that? Can you send me the link? Yes, you can take my affiliate link for that, for that item. So Amazon has been huge. Recently, I've just added B&H. Um, so whether you're buying camera gear from Amazon or B&H, I can get a percentage of each. Now this isn't anything crazy either. I have two checks in my bag right now. I wanna show you my last two Amazon affiliate checks. By the way, I love living in downtown Orlando. It's such a big market, but very small at the same time. There's a lot of traffic coming through this area. It's a great hub to be stationed at if you want to be a freelancer or like myself, you work locally, but you also travel. We got an international airport. It just makes things very easy. So those two Amazon checks, make sure I'm not showing any sensitive information. Okay. So we got one for this month, which was $163. And then previous month was 117. So those are my monthly payouts for just having links on my YouTube description that are evergreen. They stay there. People click on them. I reference them a lot and I say, if you need this part, 
the link is in the description. The same thing that every other YouTuber does. These are just the actual numbers that come from a channel of my size with my type of audience. It is so hot out here, but I would call these more like passive affiliate links. I'm not actively trying to get people to go there. It's just there in case they want to find it. The other affiliate program is we got Amazon, we got B and H. I think actually I think that's it. Besides the big one, which is an online learning academy called the Art of Documentary. So it's for filmmakers who want to have modules that they can learn from and then also be a part of a community. So I self-enrolled, paid full price a couple years ago. And because I had been putting out a bunch of these YouTube videos, I had been putting them into their Facebook group over and over again. There was no desire for immediate payoff um, or any type of return. I just said, I wanna share the things that I'm doing. Didn't get a lot of traction, but what happened is the organizers saw that I was someone who was doing things. So the next year, when they said, we're opening up our doors again, would you like to become an affiliate member? We'll give you 10% of each purchase that a customer makes. That's great. This is gonna be my first like real affiliate program. So let's try it. Now I had a thousand subscribers when I did this. And I think I got 16 or so people to sign up. And the total payout was $2,000. $2,400. So I got them $24,000 of enrollment into their online academy. That blew my brain because I have an extremely small channel and you're telling me I can make people purchase $24,000 worth of digital assets? That immediately started getting my brain going of, okay, maybe there is uh, some, some plays that are in the near future that I can implement. So the following year, they said, do you wanna do the same thing? And that was the point where I said, I don't know if this will work because I'm selling to my same audience. I had increased, I went from 1,000 to 2,000, but I didn't know if I can sell to them again. Well, I was wrong. I could sell to them. And not only could I sell the same amount, I could sell more. So the following semester, I sold again, I brought in $2,500 to, to myself, so $25,000 of enrollment to this company. I didn't think that was possible. 2,000 subscribers, a, a YouTube channel with 2,000 subscribers, I didn't think it could be making big moves like this. So that's another thing that kind of got me going. And now kind of the highlight for this video, the reason it's titled this and everything was, they said, can you, do you want to do it again? I said, yes, no problem but I still have the same fear. I'm selling to my same core audience. However, my, my subscriber count is now near 6,000, 5,700 right now. The problem is I didn't have as much time for these brand integrations on this video. So I would, I think I mentioned it once or twice in, in, in one of my vlogs and I said, this has helped me a lot. If you wanna increase your network, you need to talk to more people. This, this um, school puts you literally in a room with more people. People all around the US, all around the world, this is a way to increase your network. Now I mentioned it in that video and then I slightly mentioned it in another video. And I was like, I don't care. You know, this is, this is not the money grab that, I'm that I know it could be. I'm just gonna mention it once or twice and it is what it is. Then I get a call or a text from uh, one of the organizers at the Art of Documentary and they say, um, just wanna let you know, uh, you're doing great. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I've put in the least amount of effort that I ever have. You're our top affiliate. Okay, now I'm interested. I haven't even opened the webpage that says what my payout is for this semester. So she said, if you wanna broadcast it out one more time, it would be a good time to do that. I didn't, I just didn't have time and kind of whatever I was, it is what it is. So 
Um, now, the actual payout from this blew my mind again, and I am at 5,900 and something. So let's just call it six grand. So I made six grand from what I feel like is doing nothing. I barely integrated it. Now I've talked to a few people about this and of course they're like, you have done a lot of work. It was the past two years of work, building the trust with the audience, showing you working day in and day out, showing the jobs that you've gotten from the art of documentary, how it's helped you. It's not just one video of saying, this helped, buy it. It's been a ton of time showing this proof of concept. I host uh, meetups in Florida, all over the US. Um, let me just run through the list. Atlanta, Dallas, just did San Francisco, and um, I'm, I'm keeping those going now. So those have been a part of this AOD effort because a ton of AOD members from all of these cities always come in. And now I have this big chunk of change, this $6,000 uh, bag that I, I did work for it, but I don't really feel like I did, which is nice because I'm like, well, how much would it be if I worked for it? But now I need to decide what am I doing with this money? Because if I throw it into my bank account, it'll just blend right in and I'll never know what happened to it. However, if I set it up for something uh, intentional, then there is an opportunity that it could be used for a down payment on a house, like working towards a down payment. Having $6,000 in an account that I am now adding to, to get a house. I'm in a beautiful condo right now. I love it. I kind of don't want to change, but this could be a new condo that I own. This could be a house that I own. This could be a big level up in life because of an affiliate program. Or I could max out my Roth IRA contribution this year. And I think, I think it's up to 6,500 this year. So that would be boom, Roth IRA is taken care of. There is just so much that I can do with this money. And this is not the end of the money. This is me realizing the potential that, that being on YouTube can have. So that brings me into the last point, which is having your own digital products or having your own products, physical or digital. Let's do digital first. So digital would be the art of documentary. If I'm making six grand off of them, they're making a lot more. And I'm, I'm stoked for them and I'm taking notes. Luke Forsyth is another career, uh, much higher level than me, career uh, documentary DP. And he implemented his own course. He also joined AOD. I, I think he did it as a little bit of recon work, but um, he put out his own, his own um, learning modules and community, very similar thing. I don't know his numbers, but I would assume that he is making a very comfortable return from that. I can build towards that. Um, it is something that is very real. I just don't want to do it too early. I also want to learn more so that I can teach more. And then you have physical products. Recently, um, Caleb Pike from DSLR Video Shooter he made a product that I had been wanting to see made for years and I wondered why no one had it. So you take the FX3, you throw it into a cage that makes sense, turns it into a long rectangle style camera with V-mount power, multiple D-tap outs, a nice on and off switch, and it integrates with the handle and the XLR. It's beautiful. And it was a gap in the market and he saw that and he had been creating products for years he's always thinking and he's self self-identified himself as a maker now that is what he is he is a youtuber but that is just the documentation of what he's making and i think this is the big switch that youtube is going to have it used to be you go into your room you, you turn on the lights the rgb light the neon sign on the back wall and then you talk to camera 
And I think that is going away completely because it's played out, it's boring, unless you need a, just a direct give me the facts type of thing. What I think is gonna happen now, and is already happening, is you need to have the thing that you are doing outside of YouTube, and then YouTube is your documentation stream. That is where you are saying, these are the problems I'm finding, this is how I'm strategizing to solve the problem, and these are the outcomes. That is way more engaging as a viewer to see someone work through problems. I try to implement that in my vlogs. What is the hurdle? How can I get around it? This is the outcome. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. But that's a way more entertaining video than let me just speak to camera. There is a YouTuber in Miami who I am copying this style directly now from. If you've seen any of my vlogs before, you know that I copied the Cranky Cameraman. I loved his behind the scenes style. And now I see this other guy, this realtor in Miami, and all he is doing is holding his phone like this, walking down Miami, South Beach, wherever, and he's talking about the homes, the market, um, what is happening to condo fees. He is a synthesizer of information. He takes all of the news and the facts and the stats that are happening and he compresses it into a small video and gives you the clear, concise information. That is extremely valuable to someone and you begin to trust that person because they are the authority in this space. So it is the same thing as going to your YouTube studio, turning on the lights, except just in this case, he's just taking a walk around town. His views are nuts for someone who is doing so little. He is holding his phone and he's got another phone where he's looking at stats and figures and just taking a hike, that's it. I've seen in the last few months him jump up about 30, 40, thousand in subscribers um, he's averaging a hundred to two hundred thousand per video views per video so I would like to know what his RPM is I know he's making a ton of money but his outside thing is he's a real estate agent so I had a quick anecdote from what my uh, job last week I was talking to our host and he said, I said, how did you get this job to be the host? Like who, like, who are you? And he goes, oh, the reason I'm in this position is because I worked at basically a, a, a shop that did simple projects. So I know the industry and I know what it takes to be able to fix these problems and we would apply that to the customers. The difference is now I am selling that as education. And he said he is, gotten so much further from doing the work to just sharing the work so now he's in front of all these conferences he is basically an influencer and he he has the same knowledge in his head but when you apply it to to sharing the knowledge rather than just paying a one-off thing for a customer comes in we fix it send them on their way you can make so much more and that's what I'm trying to get to being an influencer is so lucrative. Like I would consider myself a micro influencer at this point. I have 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's pretty much my only platform. I mean, if you have more than that and you're smart with it and you have a product or you have something that you can sell, something where the money flows straight down, I don't see a reason to work for anybody else ever again unless you need to get information and experience and stuff that you can apply to these videos. But the job security that I can have if I myself am a business of one and I'm sharing to the masses through a platform like YouTube, like right now, I'm just walking around with my phone. This money, this video will make money. This video will set me up one step further down the path. It's not just about this video. It's about building my catalog, building trust with you, the audience, building the relationship. It all stacks up. So even though each one of these videos does not do a lot for me, 
in the grand scheme of things at Wills. I, this TD hat was, uh, I did a job for TD Bank, which is a, a very large bank. And the reason I got that job is because their head of video saw me put out my vlogs over months and months. Finally, when he had a job in Orlando, he said, I already, I feel like I already know you. I feel like I already trust you. Are you available? I did the job for them and it went great. And I've been rehired since. That came from YouTube. So it's not the individual video. It's the, the long play. And it took me a while to realize that. I was never focusing on getting this much money from this video, but I, I was interested in it. And now I know that's, that's not the way to think of it. It's building my entity. Because I can take me much further than what YouTube will say my thousand views are worth. That is just the, the, the bricks for the home that I'm building figuratively. Um, I myself, I'm the business and I need to keep experimenting. I need to keep trying uh, new venues, this type of talking to camera thing. Uh, I would love to do a podcast, getting on other people's podcasts, basically getting myself out there. Even it could be passion projects, just uh, videos that I want to make just because. You know, two really insane examples of getting insanely, insanely rich from doing something that you just enjoy is Mark Zuckerberg. Um, he was just interested in making this type of community website. Now he's ridiculously rich. Joe Rogan started his podcast just in his living room, broadcasting to no one, but just having fun and talking. He recently said on a podcast, I would keep doing this even if I didn't make any money. It just happens that it makes a ton of money. So that's what I'm trying to direct towards. What are the things that I like doing? And if I, if I start doing those, I'm gonna keep doing them because I actually like doing them. This is one of them. Communicating with an audience, unloading all of the things in my brain onto YouTube and then interacting with this community. I can see it going so much further, um, but at the same time, I'm not super focused on that. I'm just doing building blocks right now. Some of these building blocks are paying off really, really well. So now this video is just a data point for me. I'm gonna see what the views are like, what the engagement is like, what the interaction is. It doesn't matter if it does bad. I was just talking about this with a fellow YouTuber lens of Jared and we were saying we're, we're just trying to figure out what hits the algorithm what works best because we're doing the same work it's just packaging it in a different way for you too and that's what this is if it bombs it doesn't matter it's a data point now I know let's switch up that style personally this is awesome I'm just walking around town yapping to my camera and uh, it's a little cringy not gonna lie but I like having this free flowing uh, idea transfer. Now, one of these condos would be awesome, but they are in the $400,000 range and the HOA is extremely high, around 500 to 1,000, but they get to look at the city and they have a beautiful skyline, skyscraper view. Uh, this is the, the part of downtown that I really like. So how can I increase my own brand? Well, I've got a ton of ideas and I'm just trying to think of what is the best implementation. I've heard of a lot of success happening from newsletters, like yes, old email newsletters. And I could do that. That would be kind of more wide general info on where is the next meetup, what city, or just random topics of discussion. I want to continue doing my meetups. I want to make it a uh, more national effort. I want to go to more states, more cities, maybe new countries. Um, I can see that I can consistently pull a crowd of 20 to 40 people no matter where I go. But that is with the help of people in these areas. Like just how AOD was looking for uh, someone who was active. I'm also looking for people who are active and, and working with them to hold more meetups. In, in different cities. One thing that I really like is meeting up with other local YouTubers and 
just talking shop. What are they trying? What are strategies are they using? What are they experimenting with? Because the more I do YouTube, the more I, I used to think of like influencers and stuff as like, oh, those are those guys. Now, it's just people who are trying things. And I like trying random things. I thought of doing a whole vlog in Spanish. I'm not fluent, but it would be a fun challenge to do. I, I like doing uh, these new MMA and boxing workouts. I'll put some footage at the end, but that is something that I suck at. And it's really fun to fire the, I don't know, synapses in your brain in a different way. Something that is never happens in a filming situation or whatever. Triggering the flight or fight mode, um, it's, it's all new and it's fun. And I think that stimulation is really important. So I'm gonna continue with the YouTube thing. I'm gonna continue to stack little amounts of money and then big chunks of money. And the big psychological change, I think, what would be a big difference is when I can get my monthly YouTube AdSense money to pay for my rent or mortgage. Having that type of psychological switch to be like this is paying for a portion of your life will most likely incentivize me even more to say well what else could it pay for could it pay for um a vacation somewhere can it pay for this big new asset maybe a uh the supra i've been talking about could i just get that because of this or could I max out my investment somewhere else? I can figure a lot of things uh, that I could do with money. So the more that keeps coming in, the more I'm using it as data points. What can I use? What can I test? While having fun on YouTube and doing the things that I like. So if you guys have any ideas of what you think could work, don't be shy. Share it in the comments, um, whether that's a podcast, TikTok, uh, something that hasn't been done yet uh, you, you can probably get a little bit of back and forth I certainly respond to every comment that's on my channel and uh, be happy to hear what other people are thinking of trying and most importantly what they are doing so uh, I like this format I'm gonna keep doing this and I'll see you guys in the next video